Here's a quick introduction to counting sort. Let's just say as an example, we are trying to sort this array into an ascending order. And counting sort works the best when the range of numbers each value could have is very small in the array. So let's just say the range of values that we could have for each item is 0, 1, 2, and 3. The first part of applying counting sort is going to be finding the starting index for each number. And it's going to be clear what I mean by that in a second. And the first step for doing that is going to be counting the number of occurrences for each number in the array. So for this example, there's only one occurrence of 0 and three occurrences of 1. So I'm going to write down 1 and 3, and then two occurrences of 3, and zero occurrences of 2. And we can store these numbers in an array of length 4 in this particular case. Once we have these numbers, the number of occurrences for each number, the second step is going to be adding each number to the right of it accumulatively. What I mean by that is the first number at index 0 stays the same, and the second number will be 1 plus 3 equals 4, and the third number will be 4 plus 0, which is equal to 4, and the fourth number at the index 3 will be 4 plus 2, which is equal to 6. After that step, we have the numbers 1, 4, 4, 6 for the numbers 0, 1, 2, and 3. The next step is going to be shifting this whole array to the right by one cell. And we're going to do that by looking at this array from right to left. We're going to first start with the last index, which is index 3 in this particular case. And the value there should be the value that's currently in index 2. So we're going to put 4 at index 3. And we're going to do the same thing for index 2. The value here should be what's in index 1 currently. So it should also be 4. And at index 1, we're going to put 1. At index 0, we're going to put 0. And these numbers, 0, 1, 4, 4, are actually the starting indexes for the range of numbers we have in this particular case, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And here's one way to think about it. If you look at the number 3, or the index 3, the corresponding number, the corresponding starting index, is 4. And that's because when we sort this array, the number 3 will start at the index 4. Another way to think about it is that there are 4 items that should appear before the number 3 in the sorted array. And that should be obvious if you just look at the first array that we constructed. There is 1 occurrence of 0, 3 occurrences of 1, and 0 occurrences of 2. So adding them up, there are 4 items that should appear before the number 3, and that's why the starting index for the number 3 is 4. Once we have the starting index for each number, the rest is relatively easy. We're going to first initialize a new array that's the same length as the original array, so length 6 in this particular case. And then we're going to iterate it through the original array one by one. When we are looking at the first element of this array, which is 1, we're going to check what the starting index should be for this number from the array that we constructed. We see that the starting index is 1, so we're going to put this number into index 1 of the new array. And then we're going to increment our starting index by 1, and it becomes 2. And this is so that when we look at the second instance of the number 1, we'll know that it should go into the index 2 instead of 1 and then we're going to increment it again. We'll do the same thing for each number of this array from left to right until we get to the last number in the original array. Now, you might have noticed that this process makes counting sort a stable sorting algorithm. What that means is that, of course, if you look at different instances of the same value, for example, the number 1, the order in which they appear in the new sorted array is exactly the same as the order in which they appear in the original array. This wouldn't matter if they were just number one, but if they represented underlying meanings to them, for example, if they were ages of people, 
three different people, let's say Emily, Tom, and George, then we might care if they appear in the same order or in a different order in the sorted array as the original unsorted array. Now let's quickly go through a few important properties of counting sort. First of all, as I mentioned, it's a stable sorting algorithm. And the time complexity for this algorithm is big of n plus k, where n is the number of items that we have in the original array, and k is the range of numbers that we could have for each item in the array. And finally, the auxiliary space complexity is big of n plus k for counting sort, because we need to create an entirely new array with length n, the same size as the original array, as well as an array of length k to keep track of the starting index for each number.